Kelly, thank you very much for that. Joining us now is former chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors, Kevin Hassett. Kevin, wonderful to see you. So much to talk about. It is, it's yep. sort of a perfect storm, sure. isn't it? All of these issues are working against getting the economy back up on its feet. I mean, I know we're, we're roaring in some areas, but inflation is roaring as well. We still have the supply chain issue problem, and a lot of that has to do with the labor shortage. And now, because of the policies of the Biden administration, we have this new vaccine mandate that, that was devised back in, in November. Uh, now it's, it seems less scientific than ever to have a vaccine mandate, particularly with Omicron, when everybody's getting, uh, getting infected despite vaccines. But it kicks in in four days on truckers. 50% of all truckers, it's estimated, have not been vaccinated. So that would, that would essentially possibly eliminate up to 50% of truck drivers who are already in short supply. That's going to make the, the supply chain crisis even worse, no? Yeah, that's right. And, and the fact is that they keep saying it's a supply chain crisis, it's a temporary thing. But as your previous story highlights, that there are these liberal policies all across the country that are leading to kind of a permanent uh, negative shock to supply. I can tell you, I went to the grocery store to shop. That's one of the things I do for my family. You know, we break up the, the jobs. And, and there was no beef at all at a grocery store, a big grocery store right here in D.C., I mean, it's astonishing how much the supply disruption is affecting everybody's lives. And what the Biden administration is doing is they're pushing harder on the liberal policies. You know, come on, they're allowing train robberies. And, and now, you know, the, the shock to trucking is going to be really, really startling, I think, that, uh, you know, probably you'll get double digit inflation because of this. And it'll continue uh, to skyrocket out of control until, you know, basically, I think the Republicans capture the House and start to move policies in the opposite direction. It's it's clear that this White House doesn't have a plan to deal with the and supply chain have disruption. An, it, you know, where was Mayor Mayor Pete when, when you know I-95 oh, was shut please. for two days because of a, a small snowstorm, right? It doesn't have any humility either. The, the willingness to say, look, I was wrong in this thing. For example, the vaccine mandate was, uh, they, they announced that back in November. That was, of course, long before Omicron hit. It was before a lot of the uh, the witnesses of, of the, the failure of vaccine mandates to really do the job in creating more vaccines. And, and they, could, they could turn that around and say, look, because of the supply chain problem, we're going to cancel the vaccine mandates for truckers. But they're not doing it. It's only four days away. It kicks in on January 22nd. I mean, they could turn this around if they wanted to, but they're, they're so stubborn they refuse to. Right. And, and don't forget that their story for the last few months is that it's a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Right. And now their own CDC director admits that's not true, that people who are vaccinated, you know, thank goodness they're protected maybe a little bit more or probably a little bit more for, against severe outcomes. But they're spreading the disease, too. And, uh, and, and so this idea that you're going to stop the spread with the vaccine is something that even their own policy right. people, uh, health policy people reject. And yet they're still imposing uh, the mandate because they want to slow the spread. Uh, you know, I absolutely think everybody should talk to their doctor and think about whether the vaccine is right for them. It's I chose to have it and the booster. Uh, but to mandate it, that, that's a different story. altogether. Yeah, particularly if it exacerbates terribly the supply chain crisis, which it looks like this is going to do now on inflation. You, you mentioned yeah. uh, the possibility that we're, we're going to double digits. We had wholesale uh, prices up 9.7 percent annually. Uh, we got that word last week. So we're very close to because right. those are eventually passed on to retailers and, and consumers. So we're close to double digits. But listen to what the president said on the day the CPI figures came out last Wednesday. He said we are making progress in slowing the rate of price increases. That's directly from the president on the day the CPI numbers right. came out. I mean, talk about a state of denial. It's direct. Right. Well, what he was doing is he was trying to take advantage of the fact that the number blipped down just a little bit, you know, month to month. But the fact is that we're about to hit a wage price spiral. I think every economist who's studied the history of this agrees that wages lag prices. Prices went up a lot last year. Real wages declined 2.6 percent over the last year. And so now people are going to their bosses and saying, hey, increase my wage. And when they do that, the bosses have to lift their prices. And so it's 
going to happen. We're going to have a wage price spiral. Uh, prices are going to go up from here. Inflation is going to go up from here. And, you know, one little blip in the CPI report is not something the White House should crow about. I guess the fact is the media never holds them to account when they say stuff that turns out to be wrong a week later. Right. Uh, but except for you. <laughs> except, right? for, except for you. Except I mean, for absolutely. Us. It's getting worse. It's but not getting better. It's, it's not yeah. just it's not just uh, Republican economists like yourself were saying. It was James uh, or excuse me, Jason Furman, who was uh, the one of the chief economists for the Obama administration, said mm -hmm. in the Wall Street Journal on Friday that, in fact, 2022 was going to be worse for inflation than, than 2021 was. Of course, Larry Summers has been saying this for a while. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to have egg on their face when, when the numbers go up and they're going to turn out to be so wrong. Is, is there anything that they could do right now, other than dealing with the supply chain issue, which we mentioned, the, the trucker regulations, et cetera, to turn this inflation story around? Yeah, you know, I think one thing that they could do is that there are a lot of really sensible, uh, reasonable Democratic economists that understand, especially now, what's going on. And I think that one of the signs of the lack of leadership of President Biden is, you know, everything's heading south on him and he's not bringing in any new voices. You know, Donald Trump, uh, he, he would fire somebody almost every week, right, if he didn't think they were doing the job well. That's what leadership's about. You know, Biden needs to bring in a little bit of fresh blood, some fresh ideas, because clearly the team that he has right now isn't getting the job done. I'm not saying he has to fire anybody, but he definitely needs to bring in a Larry Summers, you know, to, to help yeah. him think about what he needs to do because they're would be absolutely not taking any moves right now. Yeah, they're not making any moves right now that'll move it in the right direction. But by, by the way, do you, do you, have you been hearing anything that Larry Summers might be tapped or maybe Jason Furman <laughs> would come back? No, I, I have not heard yeah. anything at all. All right. Uh, finally. But, but, you know, President Biden doesn't talk to me about stuff like that. <laughs> well, finally, so. I, I got to ask about taxes, because as we mentioned before, uh, we're still operating under the Trump tax code, which which has brought in enormous numbers of revenue. We have a 55 right. percent increase in income tax. I think it's 44 percent increase in corporate revenue that's come in as a result of uh, the tax code. Is there any justification for changing the tax code when it appears to be working so well? No, there, there isn't. You know, the, the tax code is working well. But one of the things that we saw, you know, you alluded to a CBO report that came out that was a big surprise, about $250 billion surprise in revenue. Well, one of the reasons why that happens is that with inflation, you get sort of fake profits, right? Because you're just raising prices to keep up with inflation. And when you do that, uh, then it looks like a profit. The IRS takes some of the money, but it's not really. Yeah. Kevin Hassett, good to see you, Kevin. Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate good it. Good to see you. Thanks. Well, a